Welcome back. Last time I mostly focused on the Portuguese and the Spanish. Today I want to spend a little bit of time looking at the French, the English, uh, and the Dutch. We won't spend as much time on them but because uh, they didn't get started at first, but we'll kind of talk about them. So if you want to follow along, this is Lecture uh, 5, European Voyages of Exploration, Discovery, and Colonization. Okay, so f France gets going. Um, some of the famous people are Giovanni de Verrazzano, uh, Jacques Cartier, and Samuel de Champlain. Uh, Quebec is basically the center of New France. So a lot of times Samuel de Champlain is considered the father of New France. Um, and I've got some maps that can kind of show you uh, where these people explored. Um, some other French explorers were Louis Joliet and Father Jacques Marquette. They explored the Mississippi River. Uh, Robert Cavalier sailed down the Mississippi River and claimed uh, the area for King Louis. He named it Louisiana. Uh, there'll actually be a war between the English and the French over this area uh, later on in the mid-1750s. But New France is mostly located in Canada, and they, it mostly revolves around the fur trade. Um, France found out that the fur trade was a very lucrative business, uh, especially with beaver pelts. You could make a lot of fancy hats and clothing that were popular in Europe. And the Indians would trap the beavers and trade them to the French in return for knives, uh, blankets, guns, uh, iron cooking pots, etc. Um, the French then sell the pelts in Europe. And France did not really let a lot of Frenchmen come to the New World. France knows that if we if we import a lot of Frenchmen to the New World, they're going to start bumping up on the Indians and their land, and then the fur trade is kind of going to break down because the, the French colonists and the Indians will fight each other. So basically, New France never really grows in population. It's got a lot of land, but it doesn't really grow. Um, and France does not allow their religious dissenters to come to the New World. Uh, the English are totally different. The English really let... Uh, religious dissenters come to the New World, but France does not because they're worried all the Protestants will come to the New World and then New France will be Protestant. And remember, Protestants sometimes ally with other Protestants. You know, if you're a French Protestant, you might ally with England instead of France because to you, Protestantism, you know, religion trumps nationality. Um, now, the English are a little bit different. They mostly hug the coast, the Atlantic coast. They also uh, occupy and settle, conquer some, some Caribbean islands. But the English explored and conquered the New World through something called the Joint Stock Company. It's basically an association of individuals that pool their money together to undertake a colonization venture. Now, there's lots of joint stock companies throughout English history. Um, the Company of the Staple. The Muscovy Company, they traded with Russia. The Levant Company traded with the Ottoman Empire. The East India Company is in India. Um, so the English have done this for a while. And basically, the Joint Stock Company allows you a lot of benefits. Uh, the company does not dissolve when the owner dies. Uh, there's limited liability. You know, if you start something and it fails you have to pay everything back so you can be ruined financially. But under a joint stock company, you can get together 100 people and you can all give a little bit and you can go start a colony in the new world. And if it fails, you only lose the amount you invested. You're not responsible for paying the other you know, people's debt off, just your own. Um, so this allows a lot of middle class people to support overseas ventures. So if you're kind of like thinking, how are the, the European countries different? Portugal, Spain, France, they tend to uh, fund expeditions just through the monarch. They don't really have private colonization. Um, everything is done through the state. They don't send a ton of people to the New World. Um, but England's different. England does send a lot of people to the New World. England allows for some private colonization. They do things through the crown still, but it, it tends to be more private. Um, England kind of got late to the game, but there are some early explorers. John Cabot explored the New World for England in 1497. Um, sorry, I clicked on a link again, so it's going to load here. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is the one that really gets England going in the game. 
Uh, she develops a large navy for the nation. Sea, she sends out sea dogs, which are basically pirates, to attack Spanish ships. Uh, she granted uh, rights to individuals to colonize parts of the New World. There's a charter that she gives to Sir Walter Raleigh in 1585, and it states that the rights and privileges apply to colonists as if they were born and personally resided in England. So when you go to the New World, you don't lose your rights. Your English rights follow you. Um, in 1588, she defeated the Spanish Armada, the English do. Um, so she, she really gets England going. Uh, Sir Humphrey Gilbert, he goes on multiple voyages, but he's lost at sea. Uh, Sir Walter Raleigh tries to plant English colonies. He tries multiple times. Um, in 1587, he plants a colony at Roanoke. Um, John White is the governor, and they drop off the colonists, and they go back to England to get supplies. But then in 1588, the Spanish Armada comes. So basically, they can't get supplies back to Roanoke until 1590. When they return to Roanoke, everyone's gone. To this day, nobody knows what happened. Um, but uh, eventually, the English get successful. Jamestown in Virginia is the first successful permanent English colony. It was established in 1607. And basically, from 1607 to 1732, all the English colonies in North America are established. So all the 13 colonies that will eventually be a part of the American Revolution in rebelling against England from 1607 to 1732, they're all established. Um, now, the, the New World kind of served as a safety valve for England. Um, criminals, adventurers, religious dissenters could go to the New World and get a fresh start. Um, so... Just keep in mind, the English have the least amount of land in the New World when it comes to France or Spain, but they have way more people. Now, James I, he's a king of England. We'll look more at him later. But he is the one that sent out uh, the Virginia colony. Now, in the charter, it's very important, some of the writing. Um, the charter says, let me read it here to you, part of it. It says that each of the said colonies shall have a council which shall govern and order all matters and causes. And then if you look at slide 21, I want you to read that. But basically what James I does is he allows for self-government in the new world and you get to take your rights with you. And finally, your rights pass on to your descendants. So if you go colonize Virginia in 20 years, your son, in 30 years, your grandson, they are going to have the exact same rights as if they were in England, and they're going to participate in the self-government of Virginia. So England allows for self-government in the New World. That's something France and Spain do not do. Now, that the impact of exploration and conquest, um, the decline in populations for the Indians is tremendous. 50 million in 1492, 9 million Indians by 1700. Most of them die of disease. Now, different historians argue about the numbers but that's the one from the most recent textbook i've used so that's why i put it in here and just remember the columbian exchange if you look at slide 23 uh, you can see the dutch empire i won't talk a lot about the dutch but they do colonize the new world and parts of south america uh, north america and they do have a pretty big empire in the east um, the dutch uh, fight spain for their independence in the 1560s they have a truce in 1609, and they finally get their independence in 1648. The Dutch have a republic. Um, the States General is kind of the legislative body of the Dutch Republic. They do start trading companies, the Dutch East India Company in 1602, and the Dutch West India Company in 1621. That VOC is kind of the symbol of the Dutch uh, East India Company. Um, the Dutch don't really want land. They want economically strategic locations or trading posts. And you can see they colonize a lot of different places. Eventually, the Dutch are driven out of the New World. The Portuguese kick them out of Brazil. And later, the British kick them out of North America. Uh, if you can see slide 26, it kind of shows you where the Dutch were located. Uh, Henry Hudson, he's an Englishman, but he's the one that explored the New World for the Dutch. Uh, in 1609, he sailed up the coast. Of, of North America. He sails up the Hudson River, uh, which is in New York. That's It gets named after him. Um, 
Later on, he dies in Canada. He's sailing in the Hudson Bay, and his crew mutinies, and they put him and his son and a few other people on a boat, and they just sail back home. Nobody knows what happened to Henry Hudson. Presumably, he died because they're up way north in Canada. It's not a very forgiving place. So that's kind of exploration. I kind of just want you to remember the, the, some of the specific people, some of the reasons the Europeans were su so successful, and kind of how England, France, and Spain mostly kind of differed in their colonization. Um, so that's the last video for Module 1. I uh, look forward to seeing you in Module 2.